So if you're feeling jealous towards other people, if you find yourself sort of having this mental Frankenstein, then I'd highly, highly recommend that you sort of really think about where thoughts come from, where your own unhappiness comes from, understanding the relationship between your unhappiness, ego, and comparison, and then start to learn how to cultivate thoughts in the right direction. So we're going to talk, I'm going to move to a different prompt for a second, but, you know, basically, like, I want you all to really think long and hard about, like, what is the influence of different things on the thoughts in your head? Okay. So what we're going to talk about now is like, where do thoughts come from? So I know it sounds like kind of a weird question, but I'd love to talk to you guys because I think it's really important to understand like where the thoughts in your head come from. If you're a doomer, if you think that the world is going to hell, if you think you're going to be alone for the rest of your life, where do those thoughts come from and how can you start to go about controlling your mind? So let's take a quick look at a case. I am more than my sex life. I compare myself to my friends all the time over everything imaginable. Relationship status, social media presence, physique, mental health, career goals, sense of humor, etc. The list goes as specific as you can imagine. I compare my friends' sex lives to my own non-existent one. This is the most embarrassing comparison I make, yet the one that affects me the most. As a result, I'm extremely jealous of my friends on basically every level. Everything I want, my friends seem to have so naturally or they have more of it. It's leading me down a spiral where I hate myself the more I hang out with my friends. Then that jealousy makes me feel like a shitty friend because I want so desperately to be a good friend and be supportive of my friends without having it affect my self-confidence or self-perception. But feeling crappy doesn't stop my jealousy. So I keep feeling more jealous and then crappier. It's a terrible thought loop, and I've been struggling for with a year now. Anyway, I'm making this post to remind myself that I am more than my virginity. I'm terrified of relationships, even though I want to be in one so desperately. So I'm extremely jealous of people who don't struggle with self-loathing to the point where they panic at just the idea of falling in love with someone and having them fall in love with you back. I have to believe that I am more than my virginity, even though it feels like my non-existent sex life is indicative of so much more of being unlovable because I'm not giving up. I have to remind myself that my virginity doesn't define me unless I let it. It's really hard to, but I have to. It's really hard to feel like I'm living in my friends' shadows when I hang out with them, but I have to. I'm thankful I found this community and I have this outlet. So this is a fantastic post. So let's, the first thing that I want to point out to y'all is do you guys notice the war that goes on in the mind? So the mind sometimes produces particular thoughts and sometimes we fight against those thoughts. And there's a lot of exploration of this in, in Dr. K's guide. And this is something that I think would be really good because there are a lot of points in Dr. K's guide that I would encourage this person to check out. One is the mental Frankenstein. So when our mind makes comparisons, what it always does is since those comparisons tend to be fueled by insecurities, what our mind constructs is a mental Frankenstein. Anytime I make a comparison, I make a comparison that proves my own insecurity. So I don't compare 10 dimensions against one person. What I do is I compare 10 people and I look at the best things that each of those people do. And I, I pick the best things for, from 10 people and I compare them to myself. So this person says, I compare myself to my friends in all aspects, careers, sex life, how they look, how social they are. And so if your mind wants to, if you have that feel of a, a feeling of insecurity, what you'll do is create this mental Frankenstein of how you are inferior all the time to everyone. And it's a very unfair comparison. So then the question becomes, okay, so like if you're having these kinds of thoughts, this person is trying to say, okay, I'm more than my virginity, et cetera. So what do you do in this situation? What do you do if you make lots of comparisons and you feel really jealous of the people that you care about, right? So there are two things that you can do. One is you can get to the root of the insecurity. So there's a very important yogic principle that sort of shows where insecurities come from and why we compare when we have insecurity. So we'll get to that in a second. The second thing that we can do is cultivate the right kinds of thoughts. So what is this yogic principle I'm talking about? So anytime that your mind feels negative emotion or feels insecure, there's a part of your mind called the ahamkar which activates. And the ahamkar is your ego and is sort of like the bouncer of your mind. So anytime you feel insecure, the ahamkar will activate and will do one of two things. 
It'll either pump yourself up or put other people down, or it'll make comparisons. So if we kind of think about it, all kind of comparison is coming from the ego. So it's sort of like, you know, anytime I compare myself to someone else, to make that comparison, I have to have an idea of myself and what I am. All comparison is driven by ego. So like if I look at someone else and I genuinely appreciate them and I don't think about myself, I'm like, oh, look at how happy my friend is. He got a, you know, he found a new partner. It sounds like he's like crushing it and he's, he's like really in love. Like that's fantastic. Notice that that appreciation has to, in order for that appreciation to exist, there can't be any ego involved. The second that my mind produces, oh, let me compare that to myself, because all comparisons are going to have like, or at least ego comparisons, are going to be comparisons to yourself. So that's going to involve ego. Ego steps in, then I start thinking about who I am and my identity, because you can't make that comparison unless you have a particular identity. So what should you do about that? So that insecurity or that ego is going to come back to some kind of emotional experience or emotion that you're feeling. And as you work on the source of that emotion, what's going to happen is the ego will actually calm down and then you'll be able to appreciate what your friends have because then like, you know, you have no insecurity that, that goes, that underlies that ego fuel. So then the question becomes, okay, how do I work on my internal emotions? So this is something that you can, you know, if, if you have clinical concerns or things like that, this is something that absolutely, um, you know, therapists can help you do. This is something that we train our coaches to do, which is sort of like help you understand your emotions and where those kinds of like emotions come from. And it turns out that as you start to like recognize the underlying emotion, like the jealousy and the ego above it will start to fall apart. Because the only way that you can be jealous of someone is if you yourself don't have something. So this is the question that I would ask this person. If you were in a healthy, loving relationship that was like positively sexual, would you still feel jealous of your friends? And the answer is almost certainly overwhelmingly no, right? And so if we really think about that, then what is the, what is the key to disarming jealousy? It has nothing to do with them. They haven't changed at all. Their situation is actually exactly the same. What needs to change is you. What needs to change is your perception of yourself. Because the other interesting thing is that you don't have to have a relationship that is loving in order to stop feeling jealous towards other people. That's what we think. So we always think that sort of fixing something on the in the external world will be the solution to our internal problems. But what you really need to do is work on that sense of being unlovable. Work on that sense of being ashamed. Work on that sense that you'll be alone forever. Right? So this person even says I'm terrified of relationships, even though I want to be one so desperately. I'm extremely jealous of people who don't struggle with self-loathing to the point where they panic. And this is what you need to fix, right? Why are you terrified of relationships? Why do you struggle with self-loathing? Like, you know, like, why do you panic at the idea of falling in love? As long as these things are there, that jealousy will continue to exist, right? So then the question becomes, when did you start to feel... Like, you know, like, when did you start to become terrified of relationships? How did your brain learn to fear relationships? And as you do that kind of work, as you ask those kinds of questions, as you work through those issues, then the jealousy will actually collapse. It'll like just kind of fizzle apart, right? As your own insecurities start to get metabolized, as you start to build confidence, the jealousy will actually kind of just, it'll fall apart because it has no basis. Because the jealousy is based on an idea of what you don't have. And that idea of what you don't have is based on your fear, your shame, your sense of unlovableness. So the second thing that you can do is be careful about the way that you cultivate thoughts. So when we talk about cultivating thoughts, what I mean is that if you really think about it, and there's a lot of information about this in the, the guides, by the way. <clears throat> so if you think about where does a thought come from, right? So we were just talking a little bit about, you know, how the world is going to hell. Where does the idea that the world is going to hell come from? It comes from external sources, right? It comes from the indriyas. And when I get exposed to things through my sense organs, either through sight or sound, that exposure will create particular thoughts. So I don't know if you guys, this is going to sound like kind of a weird question, but how many people do you thought, how many people do you think were looking forward to WoW Classic in 1979? Not a single one, right? No one was looking forward to WoW Classic in 1979. 
Why is that? Why did no one look? For, why did no one think about WoW Classic in 1979? Because their Indrias had never gotten sense exposure to it, right? When did people start to look forward to WoW Classic? When their sense organs encountered something. If you think about people who are addicted to video games, why are they addicted to video games? It's because their mind dwells in those thoughts all the time. When I play a game, I'm thinking about it, right? So the more time that my mind spends thinking about a game, the more hours it spends thinking about a game, then when I turn the game off, I've cultivated, I've spent a lot of time growing those kinds of thoughts. So even when I'm not playing the game, I'm thinking about the game. And this makes a lot of sense if you look at games that actually aren't fun to play. If you talk to people who are addicted to video games, what they'll say is that I don't even enjoy playing the game anymore. Like you talk to LOL players or Dota players or like whatever, and they'll say like, it's frustrating to play. It's not actually fun, but I can't stop. And even when they're not playing the game, they like start thinking about the game. When they go to bed, they think about their game. They're, they're like, oh my God, that game was so crappy. I hated it. That person fed so much. And so what it turns out is that it, your, the thoughts in your head can actually be cultivated. All right, so the more sensory exposure that you get to a particular thing, the more you will cultivate that thing. We also see this in cases of trauma, right? So if someone grows up in an emotionally abusive household where they're told that they're like a crappy person and that they're not worth anything, that sensory exposure will start to create thought-generating machines in the mind. And that's what they'll think to themselves all the time. Thoughts begin from kind of the outside world, right? They come in through our sensory organs. So you have to be very careful about what kinds of thoughts you cultivate. The second thing is that once a thought enters your mind, you can choose to engage with it or you can choose not to engage with it. And we see evidence of that here too. I compare myself to my friends all the time over everything imaginable. So as long as you are giving in to that desire to compare, as long as you are letting thought number one compare to thought, chain into thought number two and grow thought number three, what I want you guys to, uh, to realize is that this person has a gigantic fruit bearing tree and the fruits that it actually grows are comparative thoughts. And we see that it compares to all kinds of stuff, right? Because at this point, this person has compared so much, has cultivated all of these thoughts of comparison that the second they start to make one comparison, their mind, they'll give into it and their mind will make a second comparison, third comparison, fourth comparison, fifth comparison. And then when they go see their friend and their friend is like, you know, there with their new like girlfriend or boyfriend, that sensory trigger will activate this complex within the mind that has been heavily, heavily cultivated, fertilized, watered, and then the comparison train will begin. So then the question becomes, how do I stop cultivating a particular thought? So what you need to do is notice that when your mind starts to make comparisons that you can indulge in that thought or you can not indulge in that thought. You can start to change the way that you think. And we see that this person is doing that too, right? So as I make, anyway, I'm making this post to remind myself that I am more than my virginity, right? So what this person is doing is like the thought comes comes up in their mind that I am based on my sex. My value as a human being is based on my sexual experience. And there's another possibility that you can sort of start to cultivate thoughts that actually, you know, my value as a human being doesn't necessarily have to relate to my virginity. There are actually things that you can do that will cultivate thoughts in a different direction. So one recommendation that I'd have for people who experience a lot of jealousy is ask yourself if you were in a happy place would you still feel ill will towards the other person? And then if the answer to that question is probably no, you wouldn't feel ill will. Like, so if you feel jealous of someone else's relationship, ask yourself, if I, am, if I was happier in my relationship, would I be jealous? Then the answer is no. And then what you ask yourself is, okay, so what am I unhappy about in my relationship? And as you do that, what you're going to be kind of doing two things. One is you're going to be stopping the process of cultivating comparative thoughts. You're going to be sort of reigning in the jealousy because if you don't ask yourself that question, you're going to think about how jealous you are. You're going to think about how good they have it. And for the next 30 minutes, you're going to be fertilizing your comparison tree. So instead, ask yourself, what am I unhappy about? And then as you go through that introspection, not only are you stopping the cultivation of comparison, you are also introspecting about your own unhappiness. 
And as you sort of start to ask those questions and hopefully do it in sort of a productive way, where you start to try to remain a little bit objective, try to accept yourself for who you are, hopefully you'll get to the root of the, your unhappiness and you'll start to metabolize that as well. So if you're feeling jealous towards other people, if you find yourself sort of having this mental Frankenstein, then I'd highly, highly recommend that you sort of really think about where thoughts come from, where your own unhappiness comes from, understanding the relationship between your unhappiness, ego, and comparison, and then start to learn how to cultivate thoughts in the right direction. There are a lot of different things in Dr. K's guide that relate to this concept, and this is sort of like why it's hard because there's not going to be one video about this, but there's actually half a dozen videos. So I'd recommend looking at the video on Sangha or community. That's a video that explains where thoughts come from. There's another video about, you know, the mental Frankenstein. I think it's falling behind in the depression, uh, the, the depression guide. But this concept of like, how do we make comparisons? There's a lot of stuff in the meditation guide about the nature of confidence versus ego and where ego comes from and what is ego. There's a long lecture, like almost an hour long lecture on Vedic psychology that explains the relationship between your emotions and your ego and your intellect and how we make different kinds of comparisons. So there's a lot of good stuff in there. There's not a specific video about this, but I think as you understand all of those different concepts, Hopefully you'll be able to like really get a good handle on sort of what we talked about today. <laughs> Mary Shelley is raging in her grave. No, I think Mary Shelley shouldn't be raging. I think that she's done a very good job. Uh, I guess Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> Maybe that's why she's raging in her grave. But um, I, I think she did a wonderful job of, of giving us a concept that we can then use. Because um, Frankenstein isn't, isn't the thing that was stitched together, right? It was the doctor. Fair enough. 